right here is is really this is really the main subject right here. This is really the main subject right here. What God was dealing with me about. See, I first started off with with my notes. I said foreknowledge, grace, and time. That was what I started out with. Then God started giving me this other stuff. Then he brought it back to this. So I'm talking about foreknowledge. I'm talking about grace. And I'm talking about time. So let let, let me see where I want to start, man. God works from eternity backwards. Remember, the Bible say he's from everlasting to everlasting. So that's eternity. Eternity past, eternity future. You know what I mean? God is, is not limited to time. Time was created for humanity. Time was created for the age. You know what I mean? For this age. But God works from eternity backwards. And uh, let, let me see how I want to deal with this, man. Okay, I'm, I'm going to tell you like this. I'm going to tell you like this. When you living for God, yo, when you living for God, all you got to do is tap into the pattern. God's already got everything scripted for you. Your life is already laid out. God's already got a path for you to travel down. All you got to do is tap into heaven, tap into the spirit, tap into God and walk out the path that God already got ordained for you to walk out. You know what I'm saying? Your works is already preordained. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. You know what I'm saying? Your works is already ordained. Uh, what did he tell Jeremiah? He said, before you was in the womb, I knew you. I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. So your calling, your purpose, your destiny, all that is already pre-planned. It's already, it's already uh, predestinated. You know what I mean? So all you got to do, once you get in Christ, it's all about tapping in to what the plan of God is for your life. It ain't about you trying to uh, pave your own path and then ask God to bless it. It's about you finding out what the path of God is for you and getting on that path. And then you'll receive the blessings of God as you travel that path. You know what I'm saying? I hope I'm making that plain. I hope I'm making it clear. But everything is already scripted, man. It says he ordered the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. It said it's not in man to devise his way. And then it says a man's heart devises his way, but it's the counsel of the Lord that's going to stand. God's already got a plan for you. You don't have to plan out your life. You just got to tap into God and find out what his plan for you is. Now, check it. We're going to talk about the path first. Uh, like I said, Proverbs 37, 20, I mean, Psalms 37, 23. He said, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That means your path is already paved out and God is directing your steps. He's already got your path and he's leading you down his path. Okay. 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 Uh, Proverbs three, verse five and six. Uh, well, we'll just go to verse six. He said, acknowledge him in all thy ways and he will direct thy path. Your path is already laid out, but you got to acknowledge God to go the direction that he wants you to go. When you don't acknowledge God, you're not seeking the will of God. You're not seeking the mind of God. You're not inquiring of God. That's how you get off the path. But he already got a path. You got to tap into God to uh, to show you the step to take because he already got the path. But you can't figure out the path without God. So you got to be in Christ to know the steps to take that's on his path. And to fulfill the works that's preordained for you to do on that path and receive the blessings that he has for you on that path. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you can't do it without God. You can't walk the path of God without God. And as you and as you fellowship with God and be in relationship with God, he guides you step by step on that path. And that path is a narrow way. Straight is the gate 
Narrow is the gate. Narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. It's a narrow way. It's a it's a narrow path, though. You know what I mean? Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Uh, 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 okay, I'm finna get into one right here. Check this out. I studied this one. Matthew 16, 19. He say, uh, what you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Now check this out. What you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. But if you study it out, I forgot what it's called, but it's like, it's like present progressive, something like that. One of them English terms that had to do with the tenses, like past tense, future tense. It's like future, present, progressive. <laughs> it's something like that, but it's really translated. The best translation is like uh, what you bind on earth shall have already been bound in heaven. And what you loose on earth shall have already been loosed in heaven. So what does that mean? That you got to follow the pattern of heaven. You not direct in heaven, but you're moving. Watch this. You're moving in accordance with heaven. You're moving in accordance with God. You're moving in accordance with his pattern. It was already loosed in heaven. So now God called you to loose it on earth. It was already bound in heaven. And then it's actually translated like to uh, to allow or to forbid, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't finna get into that. But what it come down to is you following heaven. What was the Lord's prayer? Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. See, earth has to follow heaven. The pattern of earth had to follow heaven. The pattern in the natural had to follow the pattern in the spirit. The, the spirit realm don't take orders from the natural. God don't take orders from man. God don't lead man, but man leads God. Man don't lead the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost leads man. You know what I mean? So it's all about tapping into heaven and following the pattern. You know what I'm saying? Because everything was already done from the beginning. Everything was already planned by God from the beginning. So we have to tap into God, find out what we supposed to do. Earth mirrors heaven. You know what I mean? I hope I'm making that make sense, man. Uh, and then I'm going to get into the grace thing in a minute. But um, that's what it come down to. Earth Yo, your purpose as a Christian living for God is to tap into heaven, tap into God and follow the pattern and the path that he got for you because it's already paved out. It's just up to you to tap into the mind of God and get your instruction, get your guidance, get your direction. And that's the key to success, too. You know what I mean? Um, but everything is already scripted. Everything is already planned out. God, before you get to it, God already had the answer. You know what I'm saying? When a problem show up, God already got the solution. You just got to tap into God. You know what I mean? And a lot of things, it's a process, though. I don't want to make nothing sound. I don't want to make nothing sound easy. But every everything is a process. But um uh, it's already done in heaven and we walking it out in the earth in the mind of God. It's already done. It's already fulfilled. And we just got to walk the steps out in the earth. Um, it's a pattern. Yeah. The, uh, there was a church I used to go to and they called Jesus the pattern man. We follow Jesus's pattern. Jesus followed the pattern of the father. You know what I mean? He said, he said, I do what I see my father do. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Isaiah 4. I'm, finna, I'm just going to go through these scriptures. I might come back to some of them. Isaiah 40, 16. Let, let me go to let me go there. It said he know the end. He declares the end from the beginning. It talk about the lamb who was slain from the foundation of the world. So before the world started, before man ever sinned, Jesus had already made the sacrifice in the spirit. And then God set everything in time, in motion, in motion, in time. And then man sinned. And then later on, Jesus was born of a virgin. And then later on, he went to the cross. But in the mind of God, in the spirit, all this was already done because time don't really exist in the spirit. Time exists 
in this natural earth realm. See, it get, get <laughs> it get kind of deep. It get kind of deep, man. It get kind of deep. Okay, Isaiah forty six ten, man. He says, declaring the end. What you think prophecy is? You know what I mean? It's already done in the spirit, and God show you in the natural. But it, it, he show you in the natural before it take. He show you in the spirit what's what's gonna happen later on in the natural. You know what I mean? And sometimes it's conditional. Jeremiah eighteen. Sometimes some prophecy is conditional. Uh, 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 Jonah with Nineveh. Uh, Jeremiah eighteen. You know what I mean? So some stuff is conditional, but some stuff is is gonna happen. You know what I mean? Uh, anyway, Isaiah 46, 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. He declares the end from the beginning. How can he do that? Because he exists in the spirit. God is a spirit and them that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The spirit realm, everything's already done. But then in the natural realm, it had to be worked out in time. But God is spirit, so he already know what's going to happen. And he can tell you what's going to happen from the beginning before he even set it in motion. Okay, okay, okay. Psalm 119, 89, his word is settled in heaven. His will, his counsel, it's already settled in heaven. Um. Uh, Oh, yeah. Back to that pattern thing. Everything is a pattern, just like Revelation 15, five through eight lets you know that there's a temple in heaven. And then if you look at Exodus 25, 40, Exodus 26, verse 30, it lets you know that Moses had to follow a pattern. So there was a heavenly pattern that Moses had to follow to uh, to build the tabernacle on earth, the temple on earth. But it was already a temple in heaven. You know what I mean? That it was patterned after. You know? Um, and then Solomon later on built the temple, and David was the one that actually drew out the pattern and all that. But that's from the temple in heaven. You know what I mean? Uh, I already used Ephesians 2.10. But there's a pattern. The earth follows heaven. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. It's meant for earth to follow the pattern of heaven. Uh, what I got? I already talked about the path. Okay, okay. I'm going to get into foreknowledge, man. Because foreknowledge is wow. That's why some people... Now, check this out. Now, when you talk about foreknowledge... That means God already know what's going to happen. But but this is where it gets tricky. He, I'm talking about foreknowledge when it comes to a person. Like the Bible used terms like elect according to foreknowledge, chosen by God. What does that mean? Chosen by God means that at some point you was going to choose God. And God knew that you was going to choose him at some point in your life. Now, check this out. Like I said, a person might get saved at 100 years old. And they really going to get a life to Jesus at 100 years old. And God know that. Because God knows that, he done spared their life and, and spared them from all type of stuff, even though they wasn't thinking about God when they was 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 91, 93, 95, even though they might not have been thinking about God, he was sparing them. He was protecting them. He was doing stuff for them. He was giving them grace. He was giving them mercy. He was, he wouldn't let the devil get at them like he really wanted to all them years because he knew they was going to choose God at a hundred years old. So God wouldn't let the devil have his way with them through all that time. And then they get saved at a hundred years old and die. But that's foreknowledge. And so the whole time they were chosen by God. 
and didn't even know it. But because they would one day answer the call of God, that's why they was chosen according to foreknowledge. That doesn't mean that they was always doing right. That doesn't mean that they was always holy. But God knew, according to foreknowledge, that they was going to choose him. So they were his chosen because he knew what they was going to do in the future. Ain't that ain't that deep? That's why I called it uh, foreknowledge, grace and time, because when he know when he know you going to choose him, according your according to his foreknowledge, you get a lot of grace even before you got to the point where you actually chose him. Because in his mind, you was his the whole time because time didn't exist in the spirit. Time only exists in the natural. So even when you wasn't his, you was his. You get it? Foreknowledge, grace, and time. Man, it's, it's serious, man. It's serious, man. Foreknowledge, grace, and time. Man, Romans 8, 29, man. Let me get that. Romans 8, 29. And when the Bible says chosen, it really doesn't mean that God chose them. It means that they chose him. And because God knew that they were going to choose him, he dealt with them. He dealt with them in a special way. He didn't. He he. That's what it means to be chosen according to foreknowledge or elect according to foreknowledge. It doesn't mean that God chose you to be saved and then he chose this person to go to hell. It means that God knew that you was going to choose him at some point in time. So he dealt with you in a special way even before you chose him because to him, you was his the whole time. Man, that's deep, man. That's deep. I don't care what nobody say. That's deep. That's why when you was going through the ups and downs, God didn't give up on you. That's why God didn't depart from you. That's why he could, that's why he could be merciful to David and then withdraw himself and reject Saul according to foreknowledge. You know what I'm saying? He knew, he knew that Saul wasn't really with him. He knew that Saul wasn't going to choose him at the end. He knew Saul was going to reject him at the end. You know what I mean? He knew at the end it was more about Saul and it wasn't about God. So he he knew he knew that's how it would end up. So he rejected Saul. But when David departed from righteousness for a moment, God stayed with him because he knew in the end, David would yet be serving the Lord. That's crazy. That's deep. That's deep. Watch this. That's why the Bible say the devil would try to deceive the very elect if it were possible. But it's not possible to deceive the elect because the elect is is according to foreknowledge. Foreknowledge is who you going to be with in the end. Are you going to choose God in the end? And God already knows. So if you're elect, according to foreknowledge, because he know you're going to choose him in the end, then you can't deceive the elect because the elect are those that's going to choose God in the end. There's people that'll choose God for, for a certain period of time and then fall away. They not the elect because God was looking at the end. If God know that you're not going to be with him in the end, then you're not the elect. The elect are those who God knows going to be with him in the end. And those people, he look at them like they his the whole time, even when they wasn't his, even before they came to, to him. Yeah, that, that's deep, man. I, I don't want to mess it up and get to <laughs> get to talking too much and mess it up. Give me Romans 8, 29, though, man. That, that foreknowledge is something that you need to understand when it comes to being chose. Cause he didn't choose one and reject the other. He knew what he knew what it's gonna be in the end. And the people that he know is gonna be with him in the end are the elect, according to his foreknowledge, because he see the end from the beginning. 
So it's deep. Romans 8, 29, for whom he did for no. Watch this. That's why he say in the judgment, those that's not his, he say, I never knew you. Because time doesn't exist. Either you in the spirit, either you his or you not. And once he puts you in the earth and he puts you on the, on, on, on the timeline, you know what I'm saying? Once he puts you on the earth and he, and he, and he start the clock, those that are his are going to end up being his at the end. They might get saved at 10 years old, 20 years old. They might get saved on the last day of their life. But to God, they was his the whole time. Yeah, they was his the whole time. And because they were his, he dealt with them in a special way. You know what I'm saying? Grace is according to foreknowledge. That's why a lot of people get chance after chance and they, they never really suffer the punishment that they really should suffer. They never get the bad that they really should get. All right. All right. Romans 8, 29 for whom he did for no. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom predestinate, that means your path is already paved out. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. But for no. That means he put them on a path to get saved. He knew what it was going to be in the end. He knew what it was at the beginning. In, in the spirit realm, either you just his or you not. That's why Jesus got that parable about the uh, about the about the field and and you got the the wheat. And then he said the enemy sold in the tares. And then he separate the wheat and the tares like in the mind of God, either you his or you not his. And if you're his, then somewhere in the time span of your life, it's going to manifest that you his. It's going to manifest that you his somewhere within the time span of your life. It could be in the last day of your life. But if you his, then you're going to find your way back to God in your lifetime. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what predestinate means. Whom he foreknew, that means you were already his. But predestinate means he had to put you on a path to make it back to Christ in your lifespan. And that's what salvation is, being conformed to the image of his son. And then you're in the family. Jesus, the firstborn among many brethren. Talking about the resurrection. Yeah, that stuff deep, man. Give me Ephesians 1, 4. We finna travel through the word and then we gonna close it. But I believe this the most powerful concept in this message right here. Give me Ephesians 1, 4, man. See, in the mind of God, either you his or you not. That's it. Ain't no up and down. Ain't no back and forth because God know what it's gonna be in the end. In the end of your life. He know what it's going to be. And your lifetime is nothing to God. He's He exists in eternity. You know what I mean? So he know if you his, you're going to find your way to Christ and you're going to die in Christ or be raptured up. One of the two, either you're going to die in the Lord, you're going to die in Christ, or you're going to be raptured up in Christ if you his. That, that's the bottom line. He ain't sweating the ups and downs. You know what I'm saying? He could have gave, he, he could have prepared Peter more for what was going to happen so he wouldn't take that fall. You know what I mean? But he wasn't worried about all that, all that stuff. You can actually learn from your mistakes. You can actually learn from your falls. You can actually learn. It can actually humble you in the long run. God lets you bump your head. He lets you take some falls. I'm still looking for <laughs> I'm still looking for a feast as one fold, man.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. God could have prepared Peter so he didn't fall, but he let him fall, and he knew Peter was going to find his way back. Okay, okay, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. Man, according as he have chosen us in him. When? When did he choose us? Before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Yeah, chose us before the foundation of the world. When did Jesus die? the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ain't, ain't none of that stuff catch God by surprise. It was already done. Everything was already done in the spirit. Time just put it all in motion and in, in sequence. But it's already done in the mind of God. Okay, okay. Uh let me see if I got anything else. I got I got Ephesians, I got I got Deuteronomy 32:20 that just shows how God can step into time, but then he can take a peep into the future. Uh I got Exodus 33:19. I don't know what I don't know what that one is. Okay, give me Deuteronomy 32, 20. He, he talking about Israel. He knew, he knew exactly the, the ups and downs that the nation of Israel was going to go through. He said, I will hide my face from them and see what their end shall be. So God can speak to you in the present, but he know the future too. You know what I'm saying? He know the future too. He knew what was going to happen and how they was going to, you know what I'm saying, fall away and then he's prophesying in the next scripture. He says, they have provoked me to, to anger with their vanity, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. And Paul talk about that later on in uh, Romans 9, 10, and 11. The reason salvation came to the Gentiles was to provoke them to jealousy. You know what I mean? He looking into the future. He can deal with you in the present, but he always mindful of what the future going to be. You know what I mean? Uh, give me Exodus 33, 19. I don't remember what that scripture was. It says, and he said, and I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. Oh, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and shew mercy on whom I will show mercy. Yeah, that, that, why you think so many people got their life spared? God knew they was his. He knew they was going to come to him later on in life. But if he would have allowed that person to die, then they never would have got saved later on. They wouldn't have had a chance to get saved. They would have had to go to hell. But he knew that they was going to choose them at age 100. So he spared their life a thousand times before they got to the age that they was going to actually get saved. Foreknowledge. <laughs> uh, yeah, Romans 9, 15, mirrors Exodus 33, 19. 1 Peter 1, 2. This is the scripture that taught me really about foreknowledge, election according to foreknowledge. Because if you read some scriptures it'll really make you think that God chose some people to be saved and some he chose to go to hell, like Calvinism. It's some scriptures in Acts about uh, those everybody believed, those who were ordained unto eternal life were be believed. It's a scripture in Acts that says uh, everybody who was appointed unto eternal life believed, or those that were ordained unto eternal life, believe the message. Like I'm paraphrasing, but it's some scriptures that are really how you thinking like God chose some and others he rejected. Many call few chosen, but you have to understand chosen. You got to understand chosen is according to foreknowledge, which is he knew what you was going to choose. And he dealt with you based on how you was going to end. 
You know what I'm saying? He he dealt with a person based on the decisions that he knew they would make. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Uh, First uh, Peter one two man, this is the one right here. Let me try to find that scripture in Acts two. First Peter one verse two. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. That's it. You're not elect because God chose this one and that one. You're elect because he knew you was going to end up saved. He knew you was going to die in the Lord or you was going to be raptured in Christ. He knew your end. And, and but, but even before your end in the spirit, see, it's, it's crazy when you really get to looking at it. Look at that parable about the field. That's why he say people that came to Christ and fell away. He said, I never knew you. You know what I'm saying? You was never mine. If you, if you was God's, you going to come to God at some point in your life and you might go through some ups and downs, but you're going to die in the Lord or you're going to be raptured in Christ because you was his from the beginning. So you're going to, you're going to always find your way back to him. And if you wasn't his, you might get with him, but you're not going to stay with him. But he get him grace too. He don't just kill them all early. That don't mean they got to die young because they wasn't the Lord's. It's people who wasn't the Lord's that might live to 100, might live to 120 and was never the Lord's because his grace, there's a common grace on all humanity. It rains on the just and the unjust. The sun shine on the just and the unjust. There's a common level of grace. You know what I'm saying? God don't just everybody that's not mine, they got to die early death. Nah, it's people that ain't his that might live over 100. But at the end of the day, they can't say they, they can't say that they never had a chance. They can't say that God left himself without witness. Even those that ain't his still get a fair chance though. But because they was not his, they didn't choose him or they didn't stay with him or they fell away and never made it back to him. First Peter, man, one, two, man. First Peter one and two, man, elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the father through sanctification of the spirit. When you're his, the spirit is going to separate you and draw you unto Christ. He said, can't no man come to the son except the father draw him. Yeah, through sanctification of the spirit. When you his, you're sanctified by his spirit. I'm, I'm not talking about personal sanctification. Once you get saved and, and God is cleaning you up, that's a different level of sanctification. I'm talking about when you his, before you ever come to God, you was yet sanctified in the mind of God. You got levels of sanctification. Before you ever come to God, you was already his. And then once you get saved and he cleaning up your life, that's a different level of sanctification. Yeah. And then you got complete sanctification when we receive our eternal redemption. That's your complete sanctification. You know? But yeah, sanctification starts in the mind of God before you knew anything about it. And then once you get saved, now that's a different level of sanctification. You, you done been washed by the blood. And then as you, as God cleans up your life and you begin to perfect holiness, that's the third level of sanctification, your spiritual growth. And then the fourth and final level of sanctification is the eternal it, our eternal inheritance, our eternal redemption, our new, uh, you receive a new body. You're, you're changed. You go to be with the Lord. You're perfected, perfect, complete sanctification. When you go to be with the Lord, that's the final level. But he says sanctification through sanctification of the spirit. Okay. You already set apart according to God and eventually you find your way to Christ. Then it says unto obedience, and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. That's when you get saved and you begin to grow spiritually. The first obedience is to accept Jesus and believe on him. 
And then there's greater levels of obedience regarding your state of mind, your attitude, your behavior. You know what I mean? So it go through the different levels of sanctification. But before you ever thought of God, you was already set apart. If you if you his before you ever thought of God, you was already set apart. Like you told Jeremiah from the from the uh, <laughs> from before you was in the womb. Yeah, before you was in the womb, before you was a human being, you was mine. And I had a purpose for you in the earth before you knew anything about it. Before you even knew the person who gave you your purpose. Yeah, yeah, it, it's kind of heavy. It's kind of heavy. It's kind of heavy. You just you just want to make you just want to make your calling and election sure. Huh? You want to make sure you one of the chosen. Yeah, you want to make sure you're the elect. You want to make sure that you be with him in the end. And the best way to make sure that you end with the Lord. The best way to make sure that you die in the Lord or you get raptured up in Christ. And I believe the rapture is at the second coming. I just throw that in. I don't believe in pre-tribulation rapture, but it's all good with those that do. But if by chance you happen to be here when the mark of the beast show up, don't take it. I'm going to throw that in there, too. But, uh. Yeah, I believe the rapture is is right before, directly before the second coming. I believe he's going to rapture his people up. We meet them in the air and we all come down together. That, that's what I believe. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, I got a phone call. But uh, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's what I believe on that. But um. Uh, yeah, the best way to make sure that you die in the Lord or you get raptured up in Christ if you hear when he come is to focus on your relationship with Christ for today. Spend time with God today. Sit at the feet of Jesus today and tomorrow and every day if you can. Because what's going to keep you is your relationship. Once that relationship get, once that relationship, it's easy to fall away when, when you ain't, when you're not working on the relationship. It's easy to get distant when you're not working on the relationship. When you're not putting no time into the relationship, it's easy to drift away from one another. It's easy to drift away when you're not investing time into the relationship. And when you continue to invest time in that relationship, you'll be surprised how you can bounce back from a fall. You'll be surprised how you can take a setback and, and, and then get back on and get back on track. You'll be surprised how you can fall and get back up. You'll be surprised how you can take a step back, but God will bring you back forward and catch you back up with the program. You'll be surprised how you can mess around and get off track, but he gets you back on track. When you pursue relationship and continue to invest in relationship, the best way to make sure that you end with the Lord, those that endure to the end shall be saved. Many shall depart from the faith. Yeah. He said, we not of the type that draw back unto perdition. It's a whole bunch of scriptures in uh, Hebrews. He talk about hold fast the profession of your faith. Don't let these things slip. Yeah, hold fast your profession. Cast not, cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of little different, different phrases in scripture in Hebrews that's telling you to hold on. Lest any man fail of the grace of God. Yeah. Get turned out of the way. Nah. Yeah. The best way to make sure that you end with the Lord is focus on your relationship for today and tomorrow, day by day. Because those who endure to the end shall be saved. A real one going to endure. 
those that are his going to endure. It's a scripture say he knows them that trust in him. Nahum 1.7. Uh, uh, 2 Timothy maybe 2.19. He knows them that are his. Yeah, if you his, you're going to die in the Lord or you're going to be raptured in Christ. And you don't want to just assume that you his and I'm going to get with the Lord later. Huh? Because death is like a like an evil net. I think Ecclesiastes 7, it catch me in like an evil net catch fish. Unexpected. Hey, Jesus said, when I come, I come like a thief. Unexpected. The ones who not tend to their relationship get caught off guard, get caught sleeping. He said, we people of the day, they that get drunk, get drunk at night. They that sleep, sleep at night. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's why some people get so much mercy and grace because they were his. And it might not been manifested yet that they his. But they going to find their way to them. But you don't know because it's people who you think is with the Lord and going to fall away. Huh? He said it's a time that's going to try the whole world. Revelation 3.10. He said it's something coming on the world that's going to try everybody. Are they his or not? Are they real or not? Are they with them or not? That mark of the beast going to try people. When you facing death and imprisonment and can't buy and can't sell, you're not a regular part of society because you don't have a mark. Yeah, people going to be tested, man. People going to be tried, man. Are they with them or not? Are they his or not? You know what I mean? And the best thing you can do to be solid for Christ in the future is put in that time today while you hear his voice. Harden not your heart. And then Acts 2 and 17 and Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2, man, let you know that God's works was finished from the beginning of time. Before it started, he was already finished. And then he had to set time to it. Jesus was slain from the foundation of the world, but then he had to put it in motion in the earth. And when Jesus was actually on the cross, he said, it's finished. That was in the earth realm. But in the spirit, it was already done from the beginning of time. But he had to set it in motion, time and sequence, and bring it to pass. It said, when the fullness of time came, he was born of a woman, born under the law. Yeah. All right, man, that's it, man. Uh, yeah, I want to call that part. For knowledge, grace, and time, man. God works from eternity backwards. He works from a position of eternity and sets everything to time and space in the earth realm and watch it all unfold. But it was already done. <laughs> he declared the end from the beginning. And he knew those who were his from the beginning. Yeah, that scripture about the wheat and the tares, man. Say, say an enemy. An enemy sold them tares. That's why he say at the end, you was never mine. Either you was always mine in the mind of God, you was either always his or never his, regardless of the ups and downs you went through in the earth realm in your lifetime. In the mind of God, you was either always his or never his, man. And we're going to end it right there, man. Foreknowledge, grace, and time, man. Jesus up. A uh, new mixtape coming. It's going to be that full speed ahead, volume two. Because, uh, cause, hey, we, 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 man, the world, the earth, America, man, we headed into something. And we going full speed ahead in these last days, in these end times. You know what I mean? And on a personal level, you know what I mean? Seeking the will of God, living life. Just because stuff going on, we don't stop living. You know what I mean? We, hey, we live in life doing what it do. And when changes come, you adapt and you change with it. Or I, I just say you adapt and adjust. That's all you can do. When the changes is out of your control, you got to adapt and adjust in a, in a godly way, though. 
You know what I mean? And we yet yeah, gorillas out here, man. Shout out to them. Yeah. <laughs> Gorilla prophets on the loose. Huh? Yeah. Really walking with God, though. Really soldiers out here, though. Gorillas with the U-E. And really gorillas with the O. Really standing on business and not playing. You know what I'm saying? But really got holy motives and intentions, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, Jesus up, man. That's it, man. Wrap it up. Uh, God, be with your people. Uh, save the lost. I pray that lives be protected when all these attacks and stuff go down. I pray you spare people and keep people out the way and bring souls to you. Strengthen the persecuted Christians to face uh, whatever they got to face and stay with the Lord. Save the lost, man. Muslims, Jews, People rejecting Christ, atheists, agnostic, save them, reveal yourself, Lord, and be with the Christians. Lord, help us to continue in you, be about that relationship, be all that you call us to be, do all you called us to do, live the life you called us to live in Jesus' name. Amen.